All right, and now we're going to go through example 7, 8, and 9 uh, to finish out the lesson. So the first one, you want to find big R. Big R is going out to the function that's farther away because this time we are doing this about the y-axis. So big R is going out here to the parabola, x squared. Little r, the smaller radius, is coming out here to square root of x. Um, we need to make sure we put these in terms of y because we're rotating them about the y-axis. So we make sure to solve these for y. So for uh, the one we get y squared, and for the other one we get square root of y. Next we want to take big radius squared and minus it from the little radius, minus the little radius squared dy. Our bounds are in terms of y, so we're going from 0 to 1. Uh, when you integrate it, uh, you'll get 1 half y squared minus 1 fifth y to the fifth from 0 to 1. And when you calculate that out, you should get 3 pi over 10 units cubed. Number 8, uh, the big R is going up to the parabola. We're doing these with a revolution about the x-axis, so we're spinning them like this. Uh, this is the one that's furthest away from the x-axis, so that's big R. Little r is the line, y equals x. Uh, and when we spin this about the x-axis, we get a strange three-dimensional shape with like a cone cut out of the middle of it. So when, when we slice it, we are going to be getting washers, not disks. Uh, I tried simplifying this down, but since this is a calculator problem, there's really no point in doing that. Um, so write the area as a single slice. We have pi, big R, minus little r. Um, the integral is going to go in terms of x, so it's going from 0 to 2. So we have pi uh, times the integral from 0 to 2 of the big R, which was the parabola function, squared, minus the line y equals x squared dx. And when you type that in your calculator, again, if you don't have graphing calculator at home, you can use Desmos. Uh, you should get 26.389 units cubed. For example nine, this one is a little bit more complicated, so you might have had some trouble wondering how to set this up when you got here. Uh, a solid plastic sphere of radius five inches, it's gonna have a hole bored out of the center with a radius of three inches. So when we're thinking about this, I'm thinking about a picture of a sphere Kind of like a bead that has a hole bored through it so that you could put it on a necklace or something. So if I think about my sphere, a sphere is going to result when I result, revolve a semicircle about the x-axis. So if I do a semicircle and then spin it, I get a sphere. So I start with a radius of 5. So I drew in my semicircle with a radius of 5. And then I have to take into consideration the hole is going to be bored in the middle of it of 3 inches. That would be the line right here, y equals 3. Those two functions are going to intersect at the point 4, 3. Okay, you could just set them equal to each other and solve it. Or think about uh, where is y equals 3 going to happen on this semicircle curve. When I set that up, I have my line here, y equals 3, so this is my hole. And then I was thinking to myself, what well, is it going to look like 3D? Uh, so I just kind of reflected it over the x-axis and drew in a sphere with a hole in the middle of it so I could kind of visualize what it would look like. To find big R and little r, since I'm revolving it about the x-axis, I'm looking at the distance from my function to the x-axis. So big R is going to be my semicircle function. And little r is going to be y equals 3. So we want to put everything into terms of the same thing. So we want to put everything into terms of x since we are rotating it about the x-axis. We've got these rectangles or trapezoids that are going to be uh, going up and down vertical. So my interval goes from negative 4 to 4 because I'm looking at revolving this shape here, not the whole semicircle, just this piece here. Um, and then we're going from negative 4 to 4 with respect to x. Big R is going to be the square root of 25 minus x squared. Little r is 3. <coughs> uh, 
So my integral of volume is going to be pi times the integral from negative 4 to 4 of my big R squared minus my little r squared dx. Um, again, this is a calculator problem, so there's really no point in simplifying this out or doing anything by hand. Just go ahead and let the calculator do the work for you. And we end up with 268.0825 units cubed.